about what your plans are for the property. I know you've had plans for a while. Yeah, and, and yeah. Probably evolved ongoing, to it, ongoing right? plans. Yeah, and and you know, I guess uh, the one thing I. I I took a lot of business classes, but I, I probably didn't get it hit uh, in my head hard enough that you always have to be dynamic. Um, you always have to dodge the left and the right punches. And, and for us, we took um, a very straightforward business plan, which was a generational business plan. Build a small winery, build a tasting room, and have some events. Add you know uh, the possibility to grow, so we put in a second phase, larger winery, all this kind of stuff. We took that business plan, we brought it to the county, and the neighbors revolted um and so we had to kind of adjust and um so right now the plan uh which i think is a very solid one but it's also quite, uh, quite scaled back is simply taking a beautiful barn that we have here converting it into a winery taking the beautiful uh, general store that we have here remodeling that into the tasting room um, and stay small um, stay focused uh, and then you know let let the brand uh, um, build it from that point on. Um, you know through a tasting room like this, you know we could easily move probably the entire estate. But I'm not making the entire estate. I'm only making 15% of the entire estate. So I can easily do that in, in my my 3,000 square foot barn, and then let that grow. And at that point maybe we'll talk about oh yeah maybe we do need another building. And hopefully at that point we've also proven a track record with our neighbors and say look we've been pretty good neighbors. Our production is not impacting anybody. What do you guys think? We're going to expand. Is that okay? That kind of stuff. And so the the the, the grand scheme uh, and where we're going right now is still uh, continuing on the path of um, you know tasting room, uh, winery, uh, with some events. But we've scaled everything back. So what what we're asking for is uh, 8,000 case production, um, which would basically be the entire 34 acres of grapes. Um, we've uh, uh, still the tasting room. Um, and then we've reduced the events down to four events that are all shuttled. So the idea is that we can, um, you know, limit traffic on the road so that that will hopefully um, satisfy the, those that are concerned about the traffic. Uh, we've had some positive feedback uh, on our first meeting with the county, especially from some neighbors that seem to be more supportive of this particular endeavor. Um, you know, we've been, you know, selling it hard uh, because if, if, you know, hopefully this is our, that's our last straw. I mean, if we can't go beyond that um, so hopefully that'll fly and they, so the idea is really that we've kind of downsized it and um, allow the ability for us to grow uh, but and do it in such a fashion where it's not detrimental to anybody around us right now so gotcha. and using existing buildings is always an advantage yeah. because, well you know, I mean that it's a historic building so being able to use that right yeah I mean it, it, it looks historic but it was yeah but it was built, <laughs> it was built the in the person. 80s okay. yeah gotcha. uh, you know it, it certainly got the uh, the the historic look the down. Um, yeah, that's and that all has to be you know fixed up. Um, but I mean, the ideal situation is yeah, eventually we would have this open to the public. Right. Um, you know, but to us, uh, and, and part of the romance uh, for me uh, in the whole wine industry has always been estates. Has always been being able to go and see the vines, see the get your feet dirty from the yeah. sand that they grow it in. Um, you know, get an experience. Uh, for that climate, for that, that uh, um, you know, as the French call it, terroir, uh, the territory, um, you know, because that to me sells the wine. Yeah. That to me, you know, is, is the experience that I think is going to keep people buying your wine or keep, keep the interest in that wine. Because if you go to, I mean, and, and I love Los Olivos, I have a tasting room there, but I am in a different dynamic. I'm more like a wine lounge. Than I am a tasting room where you're sampling agricultural products, and so for me, I want that to be the focal point. Um, so that's why we're going to continue to 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 pursue that, um, because you know at the end of the day, having people come out here isn't about uh, you know just getting tons of people in the room like maybe in Temecula or something like that. It's more about getting people to come here and, and learn our story, and then hopefully take that story with them when they go back to their unfortunate traffic you know filled small room or whatever it is uh, but remember that quintessential moment where this this product came from yeah. you know yeah so so where are you making you making your wines now in so, Hilton, yeah? yeah so so um, I guess uh, uh, with all this county um, uh, you know sort of derailment um, we were talking earlier about sort of you know you have to you have to uh, be fluid with your business plans and so the two things I never I never really wanted to do and I, I mean I'm and don't take me, you know, wrong. I mean, I'm 
very blessed for having 130 acres, having a beautiful family and everything like that. But I also am driven about specific things that we wanted and we wanted the estate winery with tasting room. And I never wanted to have a winery in a commercial area and a tasting room in a commercial area. Right. So that's where we are. We have a winery in Buellton and we have a tasting room in Los Olivos. But the winery in Buellton, I made the best of it. Um, you know, I started making wine in other people's wineries, using their bond, using their equipment, having barrels of my own, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, after a while, you're like, you know, how do I continue to be consistent for my brand when I'm kind of, sh you know, shifting through these other wineries? So we wanted to find our own little space that we could control. So I went to a, a location, which I went to a 30,000 square foot building, and I was looking for 2,000 square feet in it. Uh, thinking that it could be uh, chopped up and it turned out that it could be chopped up into nine different wineries So I got the crazy idea. I called some of my friends and they all said yeah, we're in so we created a cooperative um, That I basically formed an LLC took a took that that master lease in the whole building and then rented out every little uh, Winery space that framed some walls up for these guys. Um, I bought the equipment brought it in and we all commonly share it um, you know, so in essence um, that was all in the right direction because I was still able to preserve Larner, preserve the winemaking for Larner, and preserve our home no matter what. Now now I can ride out the, 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 the jabs that I get from the county because I'm not worried about where I am at the end of the day. I still have a building that, granted, I don't, I don't own it, but I can still be consistent where I make the wine, um, you know, with the hope to get back here at some point and make that transition easy. I, ha I already have the equipment. Um, that I can take with me. I already have everything. So as soon as the, you know, the door opens here, I just move over and, and not miss a step. There you go. Um, and so that's why the, the Buellton, and so we call it the Buellton Bodegas. Yeah. Um, that's why that cooperative took off is because there was A, a need for it, uh, you know, from all these other small uh, producers that are in the same situation that I am, mm -hmm. that are looking for space and consistent space. You know, a lot of us start out in other people's wineries and don't get me wrong, it's great. But at some point you you get to your 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 brim where you're like I need I need to be able to close the door at the end of the day, yeah. um, you know, so I can listen to my music or I can do whatever I need to do behind those closed doors because when you're in, a, in your open space it's hard, uh, you know, you're always worried about uh, equipment use. Did somebody borrow this? These kind of things. Right. And sanitation is huge. Yeah. You know? So so it's all it's actually broken into. It's broken into individual every individual wineries. Yeah. Because I guess my biggest my biggest wonder about all that is you know yeast. Yeah. Because you're in a big building like that, so you've got that that contamination factor that could yeah. could happen. Yeah. No. Luckily, these these the the, the processing equipment is uh -huh. communal. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, everybody goes back into their space. So if they have their microflora, it's really their microflora. Right. So, you know, when it gets out into the common area and we, we wash equipment every time we use it constantly, ozone, you know, citrix, proxies, all these things, there should be, that, should, that stuff should be inert. So right. really, and, and that's the thing you're always worried about. Yeah. I mean, does, does that guy ruin my wine? Um, you know, and luckily at the end of the day, everybody still has their own zones, so their own space. Um, so they can, you know, like I said, they can close all their doors and be in there by themselves. Yeah. And, um, and that, I think, was quintessential because winemakers always want that, um, that stability. Yeah. You know, um, we're shifty on some things, but we have to be, you know, focused. Where's my barrels? Is the temperature controlled? And, you know, is everything stable in that particular environment? Right. So, and so that's why th I think that that took off. And yeah. it, it did really, it's, do it's doing really well. I mean, it's fully, fully uh, rented out. Um, because of the fact that there was that need, but also there is that, you know, it's, it's like a fusion between uh, the Lompo Ghetto and, and Central Coast Wine Service in Santa right. Maria, where the Lompo Ghetto, everybody has their own space, but they have their own equipment. And CCWS, nobody has their own space, but they have the communal equipment. So it was like taking those two, you know, again, like taking the That's top, cool. yeah, taking the top of the, you know, the, the Syrah from the France and the, you know, Syrah from Australia and bringing it here, same kind of idea. The best idea is I kind of fused those two together and said, you know, okay, we, we all don't need to buy a press because we all can use one or two. Right. Uh, but we all want our own barrel racks, our own pump, our own hoses, our own temperature controlled. So that's where it, that's where it works. That's so. great. You know, the thing that um, that comes to mind with listening to all of this about the AV and about that, that space is that you're also building a wine community here. Yeah. Which is one of the things I find about Santa Barbara that is so amazing. It's that the... the um, there's a lot of crossover. I mean, even when you're when a lot of people that are making wines, they're buying fruit from people all over this valley. Yeah. It's very much a community spirit up here, yeah. which is really kind of 
it makes it really an appealing place to be. I know. I mean, I think we kind of joke around about it. like we're we're not uh, we're not wealthy, stuck up, uh, 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 you know, yet. <laughs> um, no, I mean, and I'm not saying that that uh, there are other reasons that are like that. I mean, we're in the, we're all in the position that a lot of us uh, are making small quantities, um, you know, unique productions, uh, and so it's more authentic. And it's more about expressions of the land, um, and, I, and I like to think of it more as like somewhat like I mean you don't have huge estates or chateaus in Burgundy, right? And it's you know in Bordeaux you do, um, and so I kind of see us a little bit more like that. I mean to some extent we're also like Alba. I mean we have a lot of great good producers, but there's not like you know you know ex, you know gaudy uh, construction of wineries and you know affluence pouring out everywhere like sometimes you would see in Bordeaux or Napa right. and, and and don't get me wrong I mean you know I love looking at museums uh, you know up there but they're not wine centric sometimes right. um, so I think the I think the idea is um, down here you're closer to the source and what I mean by that is you're closer to the vines you're closer to the winemaker I mean here yeah you could go into flatbreads and you know probably 10 out of every you know 100 people is a winemaker in there uh you know so and so there is that there is a community because we live in that community we're all part of that community um and we all are all striving for one goal at the end of the day just like the the six of us on ballard canyon are striving to get ballard canyon recognition all of us are trying to get santa barbara recognition because yeah. for some reason i think we all feel like we haven't hit it yet like santa barbara is great and not everybody knows that you know, and it's like, come on, guys, wake up, because yeah, no, I mean, really. some of the most phenomenal wines that you'll have in, in you know, the United States and worldwide, uh, you know, and, at a, and actually at a very reasonable price. You Indeed. Know? So, Indeed. you know, but. No, it's a beautiful, and it, it is back to what you were saying about the, the nature of the people here, that it's, it's about the entire experience. It's yeah. about people coming and seeing the vines and being part of that source. So, so your customers, your clients that are coming in for that, I mean, that that's the package, you know, yeah. and. And it's the right way to do things. It just feels right, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think it feels right, and I think we all feel that. And I think we're all motivated by the, the, at the end of the day. that. And again, that's why, I mean, to me, it's always been, let me get somebody here and let them see, Yeah. you know. And, yeah. and, and I think part of that, too, I mean, goes back to, I mean, I lived in Italy. Agroturismo is what they call it. And that is takes all shapes and sizes. It's, it's wine, it's cheese, it's olive oil. But you can actually get out of the city. Yeah. where all you can do is get around by metro because you can't even drive your cars. You get out of that city and you get to the country and you see a product that you eat being made. You know, whether you drink it or eat it, you see it being made. And, you know, that is not strong in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. It is not strong uh, in this in this area, in this county either. And, um, you know, yeah, agroturismo does encompass farm stays, does encompass being able to stay on the place. And so people are always like, oh, is that a bed and breakfast? Is that a hotel? Nah. It's about experience because there's there's kids in downtown LA that that I mean I was watching that that was it Jamie Oliver was doing this thing where he took over the the tried to take over one of the school districts you know and some of the people didn't even know what a tomato looked like yeah. you know it's the same kind of thing like come out and see this stuff yeah. and it's the same thing with wine I mean yeah. come out and see where it's made come out and taste it I mean yeah sure you know we maybe charge a little bit more you know for our bottle of wine than we do for tomatoes. But it's still, at the end of the day, it is still an agricultural commodity. Yep. It's still part of your dinner, uh, you know. And, um, you know, it's something that I think is quintessential to show. And I think that everybody in this valley has that same that same mentality, which is they're proud of what they do. And they want to, to show that to the, to the public. And with being so close to L.A., you'd think we would get, you know, some folks interested. So, so I think we're still everybody pounding that drum. Everybody thinks of you as the backyard. And yeah, you're not exciting enough. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, I have no idea because it's. I mean, it's a beautiful know, area to the, get out to. The funny thing when when we opened our tasting room in Los Olivos, the funny thing is I found a lot of people stopping there on their way to Paso Robles. Yeah. And I said, well, what, what does Paso have that that we don't have, right? Uh, you know, I, I mean, in some ways, I think our wines are better. Yes. Um, and so you know, I was like, well, what is it that we're missing? And maybe it's the fact that we're too close. Um, or maybe it's the fact that we have been giving, you know, not to get political, we've been giving the wrong signal uh, out to the to the public. Because, you know, if you take if you take my situation where it's taken me four years to get to where I am, which is nowhere with the county permitting process, businesses don't businesses are like 
that are not family oriented like I am are smart enough to say I'm not going to go to Santa Barbara. So there's going to be less production here. There's going to be less, and so you know the, the the staggering thing for me to know is 75% of the fruit that we grow in this county doesn't stay in this county. It goes out. We lose all that money, all that tax revenue, and we lose our name. Yeah. And so that means that you know the 25% of us that are here pounding the Santa Barbara drum uh, don't have the marketing budgets of the big guys because they're the one, most of the ones that have the the power, and they're, they're not they're not even taking us serious. And so, you know, if it takes a little bit of a shift for the county to say, actually, we kind of like the wine industry. So, you know, that will bring in more interest. That'll bring in more, uh, um, you know, uh, investment. And that investment will eventually finally make that connection to L.A. So they'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we probably should just stop and stay in Santa Barbara on our, instead of going to Paso, you know. Yeah. And I don't mean any disrespect no, to them. but no. But you it's, know, a, it's it, a different animal up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah.